pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. <laughs> yeah. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Sound Rock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. All right, look at that. We're here. We're here again. Uh, for you, we got stuff going on. Stuff is happening. Rodeo. Rodeo is always happening. We, when you're on here, we're always talking about stuff. There's always something going on. There's rodeo going on. There's kids going on. What, we told you last week about about something. I don't remember what it was. Kids, kids were doing. Kids are crazy. I don't know what's what their problem is. They're experts at everything. Of course, I, of course, you know, I was a kid once, and I was pretty much expert, an expert at everything too. So, you know, that that's kind of how it goes. Um. So I won't get too much into that into that today because I, we got into it last week, and uh, you know, stuff happens. Things go. But with that, we did tell you some stuff's happening. We got some, we may have some stories. We don't know what all we're going to get to. We may, may get into a few stories about some stuff. We got some beef stories here. We've got uh, uh, plenty of craziness in the odd news. And then we will end it with a uh, a new movie trailer for you guys. But uh, rodeo's going on. Rodeo's happening. And we did tell you that uh, we were going to have a special guest in studio uh, this episode. We did tell you that. But did you also forget... That it was April. Have you ever heard of something called April Fools? Well, that's not what we're doing. We're not doing that. Look right there. You got Texas here, Texas here, and right there beside Tex, you got the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Tough Heatman, right there. So what is going on today? So what, what we're gonna do? We're gonna talk about stuff. We're gonna get us some bull riding. Talk about that, and then we're gonna talk a lot about Fort Worth, Texas, because you got you got the best event every year in Fort Worth called the Tough Heatman Bull Riding. And that's what's going on Saturday night right there in Cowtown. So that's where you want to be. And with that, let's go to Tough. You want to tell us about that event? Yes, sir. It's, uh, well, it's, uh, I believe it's the 20, 26th year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, after I was riding uh, professionally for about 10 years, I had a I had an injury in Las Vegas and I, I hit the ground at the NFR and I was paralyzed for about 20 minutes and I'm laying there thinking at some point in time I'm probably gonna have to get a real job and so uh, you know bull riding is is a sport or, or was when I was competing you know that's what retirement meant it didn't mean retirement like most people <laughs> see retirement and right. You know, major sports. You know, I know, you know, a lot of ball players that you know, uh, you know, made millions of dollars. And so when they retire, they they retire and do whatever they want. Uh, but when you ride bulls for a living and you retire, that means you have the opportunity to get a real job. <laughs> and uh, so I actually started producing events when I was, uh, you know, I was competing, uh, and the, and the first. First one was in Fort Worth. It was in uh, 1993. It was actually a week after uh, the NFR where I was injured, and I was I was actually scheduled to ride, but I had neck surgery in Vegas, and I, I flew back uh, to Fort Worth and had had a bull ride in uh, the, the the next week, and been been doing it ever since, and you know I've done them for. Like I said, uh, you know, 26 years. You know, time flies when you're having <laughs> fun. I guess it it does, and, and it's and it's a great event. You know, we we went we've been to uh, to a few of them there in Fort Worth, and and you know, thinking back to back, you know, back in '93, back in in those times, you know, in Fort Worth, that was one of the first big bull rides to go on. Yeah, it it really was. You know the. If, if you really look back at the history of bull riding, you know, uh, you know it's always been part of rodeo. Uh, I think probably the first standalone event, which kind of does what we do now, and that's feature, you know, the the best guys, the top guys, uh, and top bulls, 
was in uh, Del Rio, Texas. It was called uh, you know, the George Paul Memorial. They also called it Super Bowl, and uh, it's it started in the uh, year early '80s. It, it it's it's still happening, uh, and, and that was really where standalone bull riding really really kind of began. Is uh, where where it headed, and you know after that, actually in you know the the, the late uh, the late eighties in in nineteen eighty nine Lane Frost and and Ed Gaylord at the Lazy E Arena got together and and had you know an event they called Bull Bull Mania the first show they called it Bull Mania and it was a tribute to Freckles Brown and Lane was the you know the bull rider the contestant representative that you know it was his, his job to make sure he invited the good guys and. Uh, made sure that they had good bulls and they put up a lot of money and they uh, they they put it uh, put it on television. Gaylord, uh, you know, they owned the Lazy. They also own uh, TNN, you know, the National Network, and you know they put it on television and and that was in 1989. And you know, if you you really look at it, that's kind of what the, what they started in is really what we followed you know really since then yeah you know we started the pbr in in the early 90s and you know some people don't have a real clear memory about what is and what isn't but the reality was is that you know we just modeled what lane and uh, kind of a spin off of what they did at del rio with the george paul mm -hmm. bobby paul george's brother and john ludlam and then kind of expanded it with with Lane and uh, Mr. Gaylord, and actually Lane was killed later that year in '89, and uh, Mr. Gaylord called me and asked me if I would replace him as as a contestant director. And, and you know, I could never even come in the vicinity of replacing him, but uh, I did take on the the same role, the same responsibilities he did, and you know, making sure. Uh, we invited all the quote best guys and right. it you know what our opinion of who the best guys were uh you know we're we just kind of went at the standings of the prca because you know in our opinion that was the that was the highest level of rodeo and you know you know now i realize and looking back you know just because you know you were in the standings in the PRCA or some other organization didn't mean you were better than this guy from that association or this guy. And, you know, I think we all tend to be a little, a, a little arrogant and a little egotistical in terms yeah. of, you know, we're, we're the best or yeah. no, we're the best. And, you know, you get into different leagues, different tours and, uh, but you know, that's kind of wh where, where it started. And, you know, when we started the PBR in the early 90s, um, you know, the, the Fort Worth event, that was actually uh, wind up being the, you know, the, the kind of the first finals of, 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 of the PBR. Um, and, you know, it, it took off from there. And, uh, you know, for, you know, the first 13 years uh, of the Tough Edelman bull riding there, you know, it, it was a PBR, it was a PBR sanctioned event as right. part of the Bud Light Cup series, and uh, and then the following year it was a PRCA slash CBR sanctioned event, and then after the year after that it was a CBR sanctioned event, and uh, this year for the first time it, it doesn't have a sanctioning <laughs> body, so. Right. I don't. I don't have any initials or letters to go in front of to say this or that. But you know what it is. It's it's the same premise. You know it's the same thing that that Lane Frost and Ed Gaylord started in in 1989 in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And you know me inviting uh, you know the best guys I thought you know think that are, that are available that want that want to come ride and great bulls and uh it's a good time you know i think the one thing and you know what you, what you have to learn early on in producing events is 
you really have to kind of be everything to everybody and you have to put yourself in the shoes and the position of, of everybody. You know, for, for me, it's pretty easy when it comes to, to the bull riders that, you know, I know what bull riders want. They, they want to get on great bulls. They just want a chance to be competitive. You know, they just, so they want to get on great bulls. And they want to ride for a lot of money. But then you also have to turn around and, you know, put yourself in the, in the stands as a fan. You know, what would you like to see? What do you don't like to see? And so you look at that from, from that way. If you're, you know, if you're a contractor, you know, what would you, what do you want to see, you know, in terms of, you know, bringing, bringing your animals, your bulls to it. Uh, but where, where it really starts, you know, it starts with the riders for me because I, I was one. Uh, but you, you just have to treat everybody, you know, with, with, the, with the same amount of respect that, 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 you, you, that you want. Mm -hmm. And as long as you do that, you, you, really can, you really can be successful by – it's very difficult to be everything to everybody. But when it comes to producing events, you, you really can. You, you can make an event that's good for the guys to, to ride, you know, have a chance to get on good bulls, win a lot of money. You, something that the fans want to see. You know, mm -hmm. The fans want to see something cool, something exciting. You know, if it's bull riding, they want to see them make the whistle yeah. and be 90 points. Yeah. You know, the, it's not bull bucking off, <laughs> you know. You know, in this day and age, the, 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 the bulls are – you know, crazy in terms of how hard they buck and how difficult oh, yeah. they are to ride. And, you know, what a lot of people don't understand, uh, you know, the scoring system, it's based 1 to 25 on the animal, 1 to 25 on the ride. Two judge, you add them up, uh, and it's a possible 100 points. And, you know, you can use four judges. <coughs> you can throw out the high and the low. You can add them all together and divide them however. But it's a 100-point system and uh but at the end of the day you know people if you've never been to a bull ride and you've never went been to a rodeo it's exciting to watch somebody ride a great bull and get a high score what isn't exciting is for you to buck 50 bulls <laughs> and have 50 no scores yeah uh so when it comes to me when it comes to producing an event you know, you want you want bulls in in that they're getting on that 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 they can ride and they are rideable, and 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 people, you know, a lot of people don't understand that you know there's there's bulls that judges will mark 22, 21, 22, 23, and even twenty four that that are rideable and they're bulls that they'll mark those same numbers that aren't near as rideable and, and at the end of the day you know you to be competitive and to ride at the highest level you have to be able to ride both of them and the guys that can ride both types you know consistently mm -hmm. you know it's really not going to change the outcome over a series of events over a period of time you know the guys that ride the best are going to win you know you know more consistently and uh, you know what's interesting now we have competition amongst the bulls so you know i invite say at fort worth this week i'll invite 15 different teams uh, and a team uh, might be one guy or it might be a group of guys it might be a you know we have a uh, husband and wife we've got you know, brothers we've got single guys that you know they enter a team and they bring three bulls uh, and their fir first two bulls will be buck in the in the in the in the first round. So, uh, so you've got 15 teams, you've got two bulls, you got 30 bulls. Well, we invite at this event, I'll, I'll invite 30 guys. Usually, we do 12 to you know 12 to 12 to 15 teams. So, based on that number, that's how many riders we'll invite. So we're going to have 30 guys. Each guys will compete once, and then they advance to the semifinals which is the top 15 and uh so that that means that's the third bull the, of the team so mm -hmm. they add all the scores up and no different than the than the riders uh they 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 compete and if they're 
Bulls have the highest combined score. Uh, you know, they pay a they pay a big entry fee. fee. It's uh, five dollars five thousand dollars each. Um, and so you got 15, 15 teams at five thousand. That's 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 a lot of money. And um, it makes it makes it makes it fun, and it also brings you know it gets people involved and interested that wouldn't normally have an opportunity to to be involved or you know to be you know to be able to bring their bulls to to an event like this where you'll get you know top rank uh, caliber guys on them. So that that's it, that's pretty fun and pretty cool. And so after the the, the, the first two rounds, you go thirty to fifteen. Uh, the the top four riders after after two rounds they advanced to what we call the final four shootout and they they started nothing and I picked four great bulls and uh, whoever's first they get to pick out of the four bulls which one they want they want to ride and uh, but there's there's only four and so typically what 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 the fans will see. Is they'll see the best guys, they'll get to see them ride, you know, whoever's going to be in the top four that night. They're going to, you know, see them three times. So if you get, uh, say, Trey Benton, who last year at the national finals really, you know, I, th I thought he was he was the star of the NFR and the bull riding last year, you know, just because he was riding so great. And not that's not to say, you know, anything – negative about Sage Kimsey because Sage Kimsey's doing things that nobody's ever done and you know what he's accomplished thus far in his career is, is unbelievable and you know he was he's kind of he reminds me of what what Pete Gay said one time about Jim Sharp he said watching Jim Sharp ride bulls is just boring he said he makes it look so easy <laughs> he makes it look so common that it's just boring hmm. Well, that's what Sage Kinsey does. He just he he just does everything so fundamentally correct that he makes he makes a bull look like he's much easier than he is, and you know that's why you know he's just so good. Jim was the same way, you know, just make like the bull of the year, make him look just like like a nice spinner, and people say, oh, well, that bull didn't have him have his day. Just wasn't it was it was just nice with him. And, <laughs> That's what happens when you when you ride correctly and you make it look easier than it always did. But back to say like Trey, I mean he was just you know, he, he for the first time I think he was finally healthy going into the NFR and you could just see him riding with confidence and uh rode great and you know, he's carried out that on through this you know, through the start of the year and so he'll be in Fort Worth and you know, the only thing better than seeing him ride once is seen him ride three times and <laughs> yeah. uh you know in order for him to to win you know the, the biggest part of the purse you know was paid out in the top four uh and so that's it that's exciting and it's not uh while you know i'll tape it and uh you know we'll, t we'll it will be televised but you know I, I think when you go to whether that's a rodeo or you know i went to the dallas mavericks game the other day you know, when you're there as part of the live audience and it's a television event, you know, everything is, they cater to television. Mm -hmm. And what that means, the live experience is you're, a lot of times you're sitting around <laughs> waiting for TV timeouts. And, yeah. you know, to me, that you add an hour to the, hour, hour and a half to the performance, then you penalize the, the people that are watching it live, in my opinion. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a live event guy. I'm a live event event producer uh you know I, I know television's great it exposes you to people that might not have ever seen it but the guy that spends his hard-earned money to buy a ticket you know i think he's the most important guy to me right and i want to make sure he has a good time and he enjoys himself and i and i don't think sitting through something for three and a half hours waiting for pauses waiting for a take uh, you know television timeout or this or that to listen to a you know uh you know a, a barrel man or a clown t tell a joke that we've heard before <laughs> yeah i don't I, I don't believe that 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 should be 50 percent of the sh 
the yeah. show or the experience. So, you know, what, what I do is it's, it's a fast paced, fun, entertaining, you know, experience. You know, we use, we introduce everybody at the beginning. You know, we always use some, some fun music and pyro and lights just to kind of wake everybody up. And, you know, again, it's, it's part of, you know, enter, entertaining. You know, and some people will, will say, well, you know, is bull riding, is, you know, is it a sport or is it a show or, you know, you know, it, it really, if you're going to be successful and appeal to more than just your diehard fans, it has to be, you know, a show and it has to be entertaining right. or people aren't going to watch. So, you know, it's my job to make sure if somebody comes to, the event and they've never seen a rodeo they have no idea what bull riding is they don't know that before they get there that they have to ride eight seconds for a score they have to ride one-handed but you can explain that really quickly mm -hmm. and they can enjoy it but if you're a diehard you know trey benton and you know sage <laughs> kimsey you know all the top guys that are in the sport you know the bulls you know this that and the other i think it's enjoyable for you for you as well because it's it's a very fast pace. We don't you know we don't drag it out, and you know it's it's about a two hour it's about a two hour show two hour event. As soon as it's over, you know we write these guys a check and they all come out and sign autographs, take pictures with with the fans, and you know that's again that's something that that we started at the beginning because that's something you don't get at very many sports. Yeah, and what what I know. 100% if it wasn't for the people in the stands that bought a ticket, you know, that took time out of their life to spend their hard earned money to watch me ride or to, you know, watch an event that I produce. If it wasn't for the, those people, I would have never got to do what I wanted to right. do. And that's ride bulls for a living. And, and that's your, and that's your fan base. Your, your diehard fan base is your, is the people that show up and come to the event because they want to come see it live. I mean, exactly, and you know they they, they want to see something good. They want to see something fun. They don't want to see, you know, twenty five, fifty guys get on and just get slammed, <laughs> annihilated. Yeah. And you know, you know, people say to me sometimes, well, you know, some of the bulls, you know, you didn't use this bull or that bull. You know, why don't you use this bull or that bull? Well, if if they're if they're unrideable or if they have a bucking pattern or style that that we as quote experts or <laughs> you know knowledgeable <laughs> people say well you know a nice way of saying he's he's an eliminator or he's yeah. he's a piece of junk or, or he's, or he's bulls, uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of not very nice <laughs> names and descriptions for bulls that just aren't very rider friendly user friendly right. friendly but you know, even in saying that, you put some of those bulls in there that are so bad and treacherous, and you know, more times than not, when you do ride them, they're not impressive to watch when, right. when they do ride them. And so, you know, take a bull that bucks everybody off two or three jumps, and you know, the judge is marking 24, 25, you know, the highest they ever mark any bulls, and then you get somebody like Sage Kenzie who gets on him and rides him through all that and you know it's just not exciting to watch and you know he's he's going to be in st he's not going to be 90 92 95 points you know he's he's probably going to be in the lower 80s because yeah. it's again the the judges you know it, it's 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 subjective and it's and it's an opinion but they're just not going to get the high scores and you know the the bulls that that I I mean I produce events the same today as I did when I first started because when I first started, I was still riding. And I'm not going to put bulls in there that I wouldn't want to get on, <laughs> you know. And now that I don't ride, I, I, I still do it the same way yeah. because I think that's the most important thing that I do, and I think that's the best thing I do for the guys is I treat the bull riding part of it as if I was competing that night. And if I wouldn't want to get on this bull, and I, I don't like, you know, his style of bucking, his pattern. If I think he's, you know, an eliminator. If I think he's dangerous. I think he's a piece of whatever you want to call that. <laughs> then I just, I just don't use him. And yeah. it's, you know, 
and it, that's that's to me that's what's what's most important. And, and we we have this discussion a lot on the show with with the different different fans and things that, that comment and, and chime in is is about the bull riding events themselves. And what we find out a lot of times is when when these guys go to a bull riding, they want to watch a bull riding. They don't want to watch a bull getting on. They want to watch bull riding. They don't want to go see thirty guys get slammed in two seconds. They want to see somebody make a good ride. And, and that's what they want. Like what you're doing is where the guy, where fans can go out and they can watch a bull ride. They can see a great rider and a great bull and they can see an eight second bull ride and see guys cover and see a good event. And, 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 and you can do that and it's, it's still, it doesn't, it doesn't take away, doesn't compromise the competition. You know, I've heard, you know, some of the so-called experts say, that, well, you know, if you don't use the, 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 the baddest bulls or this and that, then the then the best guy is not going to win, and that's just that's that's untrue. You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 funny. Even when we first started you know, doing these bull competitions, so you think, well, you know, so and so is the best bull. Say you go back to the days of Red Wolf or you know, Promised Land or you know. Mudslinger, mm-hmm. Dillinger, all these great bulls. You think, well, if you have a competition, well, that bull's going to win every time because he's the best bull. Well, he's not going to win every time. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, Jim Sharp, Donnie Gay, you know, JB Mooney, you know, Chris Shivers, uh, you know, they're going to win every event because they're the best bull rider. Well, no, they, they're not because that's just not the way it goes. <laughs> You know, on, on any given night, you know, any of these guys can, can win. But, you know, over a period of time, you know, the guys that are the, the best, the guys that are the you know, most consistent, who do things correct, who, you know, put out the effort and energy every day, every time, you know, they're going to win more than yeah. the other guys. You know, whether that's J.W. Harris or, you know, whoever, whoever that is. And that's, you know, that's a, that's, that's the thrill of it. That's the fun of it. You know, you know, the, 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 the sports cliche, that's why they play the game yeah. because you there's, don't, there's no, you don't there's know. No guarantee. There's no guarantee. There just, is not. Just because he's entered up, he's not going to win. He may not win. You know, it's, you know, you know, Donnie Gay, you can say about, you know, the bull doesn't care who you are. He doesn't read that you're the three time world champion, you know, the, and the minute, if, if you ever take that approach that you think, you know, every time I start having very much, you know, too much confidence or much confidence at all, uh, you think, oh, I've drawn this one or that one, and oh, it's going to be a night off. I've ridden him before. Or he's just nice. He's just that. You know, the first thing that happened was I was getting drilled about the second or third <laughs> jump because, you know, I underestimated him or just, you know, you just tank, you know, you have to show up and, you know, go for it every, every night and that's that's the fun and that's the thrill of the sport yeah it and with the with the guys you got coming up you know uh something some some of the folks may not know uh, about you know the event coming up saturday is trey benton won the junior event and the bull riding yeah and that's that's to me that's <laughs> and you know being the 26th year and people I said, well, how long, how long are you going to do this? And, you know, even every time I, I would always think about, well, do I want to do this next year or five years down the road? You know, every time I think about that, I think of the, the, the junior event that we, we've had since, you know, since day one. And you have these kids that, that come up and, I mean, I've had kids that are, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old. You know, I'm I'm gonna ride here one day. I'm gonna ride here in the in the in the in the in the, in the junior steer riding. And if I don't do this event next year, one of those kids that, that I'll see this year that says I'm gonna be here next year, and then they would in fact qualify to ride, and then I don't have it. <laughs> I'm not going to feel very good about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's pretty hard, you know, when you, to look at a kid and take something away from them that 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 they've really earned. You know, I mean, they 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 work hard. I mean, I I invite the top 
you know, junior kid, just like we do, you know, the, you know, the regular bull riding. Yeah. And, you know, it's something that they look forward to, and we, we treat them just like, you know, the, the regular bull riding. You know, the, we put up a couple thousand dollars, you know, 2500 and then we, oh, it's called scholarship money. Mm -hmm. You know, they, that's what they want to use for, but they all get, you know, they all get a resist all hat. They all get a, a Rustock Panel shirt. They all get a pair of cinch jeans. Um, they get it if they win, you know, the winner gets a, a Lucchese, pair of Lucchese boots, but they get a thousand bucks. But they get to compete, you know, they get to look over and see Trey Benton. Well, mm -hmm. that's who they saw it on television at the national finals. Well, it wasn't that long ago, Trey Benton was one of those kids, <laughs> yeah, and that's that's pretty cool. That's mm -hmm. that's very cool. And and that's what that's what's all about because you got you know you got the kids out there that, that see these guys and that's where they want to be. And they well, that's you know the, the sport you know you know for it to continue you, you you still have to you know those those kids have to have places and opportunities you know something to to work towards to look forward to is that I'm gonna go practice so I can get good enough so I can go ride in Fort Worth one day mm -hmm. and that's you know that's to me that's there's nothing. Funner than cooler than when, when you, I walk up and I shake these guys' hands. You you can tell that this is this is the highlight of their their rodeo career at this point in in, in their life. You know, mm -hmm. twelve years old and they're getting to ride under the bright lights, Fort Worth, Texas, in Cowtown, standing next to again a guy like a guy like Trey Benton who is in the you know was in the exact same pair of boots that, 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 that they are and that's 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 fun who who are some of the guys who are some of the guys that, uh, that are going to be there Saturday what, what does the lineup look like well that you, you got guys like you know Trey Benton you know unfortunately because of the scheduling Sage uh, you know he, he uh, is at the, at, the, at the Dodge Finals in yeah, Florida Florida and that's that's a the thing that that I dislike about you know bull riding rodeos, is that there's there's always so many so many and so much going on. You're always going to have some conflicts, and yeah. I'm always very aware of trying to schedule where you don't where guys don't have to miss a you know I don't want them to miss my event, and I don't want them to miss that event, and so guys always have to make a choice sometimes. So you know Sage won't be here. And, and the reigning champ won't be here either, which is which Joe Frost. But that doesn't diminish when you when you look at the, the list of guys. Again, just because it's like when we were at uh, we were in Vegas the other day, uh, you know, Sage was there. He got bucked off his first one, <laughs> and so yeah. you know you you've got you know you've got uh, like like Cody Cody Jesus, the young kid from. You know the Navajo Nation, and yeah. you know, last year uh, he had never been, never been on an airplane before. Uh, you know, he wind up coming to. I actually got him a ticket and showed him how to get on an airplane and fly to a couple of events. He ended up going to Cheyenne, won won the finals up there, and won a ton of money, and he wind up winning the event. You know, he's a phenomenal talent. You know, guys like guys like he'll be there. You know, Cody Rostocki from right down the road, uh, uh, down around Waco, he'll be there. I think we've got, I think we've got twenty some, twenty one yeah, some odd NFR guys, and yeah, I guess you got Mike Lee, Mike Lee coming this year. World champions, yeah. Mike Lee's coming. You know, we've got we've got world champions, and we've got some. You know, we we've, we've got a couple kids. One one kid that just turned 18, you know, you know, a little over a month ago, and, you know, he won everything there is, there was in junior rodeos in high school, and, you know, I invited him to Las Vegas the first week of, uh, or I mean, to El Paso was his first event, uh, gets on his first bull, he's 90 points. <laughs> uh, his name's uh, Cole, Cole Skinder. Uh, I mean, how cool is that? Go to your yeah. first event and be 90. <laughs> first event I went to, I got, I think I got slammed. <laughs> so, but yeah. uh, he got welcomed. The, 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 the next round, yeah. uh, 
in the semifinals, he did he did get slammed, but to show up and to but I'm always looking, you know, I'm always looking for young guys like that to give them an opportunity to say, hey, you know, you've proven that you can dominate at every level, you know, that you've been at. Like I said, junior rodeos, high yeah. school rodeos, and uh, now it's time to see whether you can make it against these go. guys. And you know, that's that's where that's where it all starts. That's it. See what they got. Well, you know, bull riding. You know, bull riding. You know, it, it, when you're 28, you're you're just on the verge of being a dinosaur. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a it's a sport of youth and you know the 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 way the bulls are now you know guys are going to have shorter careers than say guys in my era because you know I rode professionally for for 15 years and if I would have been riding now I don't I think I've been lucky to ride ride for 10 and it's, and it's not like you know I the 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 bulls now Every time you get on one, he's a bucker. Yeah, and that just wasn't the case whenever whenever I was riding. Not to say you know the best bulls when I was riding, you know, you look at them, you know, Cowtown, Pacific Bell, Bodacious, uh, you know, Red Wolf, you know, all of those bulls, you know, they bucked every bit as hard as the best bull there is. You know, the world champion bull from from last year and the year before. Right. But now. They're all they're all the same. They're yeah. all buckers. Yeah, you, know, you, all don't, you don't show up and get on a bull. Never again will you show up with, to a, you know one of my events in Fort Worth and hear a sixty-two. <laughs> yeah, just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're not gonna get on jump the, kickers and no, go out there no, about no, halfway that, that, around that, and turn that, around that, one that's, time. You know that that's that's all that's all in the past because yeah. there's so many great bulls now. That's what it is. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break right quick. We're going to take a break. We're going to throw down uh, our featured artist, Chance Ray. He's going to be singing this Saturday night at the White Elephant. So if you're out there in uh, Cowtown at the Bull Riding, after the Bull Riding, sneak on over to the White Elephant. Check out some Chance Ray. We're going to throw a tune from him, and then we'll be back right after that. Let that train roll on by Couldn't find the words So I left her hanging high and dry Oh my, my Let that train roll on by Let that train Same old me, so let that train roll on by. Should have let her know, instead, I let what we had a will that night. Oh, my, my, let that train.
All right, what is going on? We're talking about stuff, talking about bull riding. Hope you guys are enjoying what is going on. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Tough Hitman here, talking about stuff with us. So, uh, you know, Fort Worth, Texas, you want to be out there, you're going to be seeing what's going on with that, and it's good stuff. So you want to be, you want to be out there. It's a good bull ride. It's a good bull ride. I've been out there a few times, and, 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 and it's going to be the best bull ride you go to all year, and, and that's just, that's just a fact. That's just a fact of it. That's the way it goes. And so you want to be there. But uh, I don't know with with the bull riding. When you, when you think back, a lot of people make fun of me because I'm old and I always say back in the '90s, like it's ten years ago. Back in the '90s, ten. You know, it I, it I still, was ten years ago. I think it was like ten <laughs> years ago, but it's like 20, almost twenty years <laughs> yeah. ago. But when that I, doesn't I, seem possible, does it? It doesn't. And <laughs> you know, and then back then, you know, we were. We, there was a lot of bull riding pens. You know, I was still riding a little bit, and I was fighting a lot of bulls and a lot of bullfights and things. And and back then, you had pens everywhere you went to, and you'd have kids show up, guys show up. You'd pay ten or twenty bucks and get on as many bulls as you wanted to. You could ride for hours. And then what what I see now on the internet all the time is all these practice pens. They're wanting to pay guys to come out and get on, and and nobody wants to go get on bulls anymore. And I don't know what's changed. Over the years, or well, I, you know, I, I, I say this, and you know, I, I don't want to be one of them old guys that you know talk about how great and how tough we were back in our day and our generation, and how soft and no good these guys are. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of kids out there that can ride and really want to ride, but, but what what I see a lot, and, and and I saw it, you know, even when when I was competing and even coming up. There's a there's a lot of guys that love everything about bull riding, except bull riding. <laughs> you know they like all the they they like everything that comes with it. You know the traveling, going fun places, cool places. You know getting to go ride, say at the you know Reliance Center in Houston or you know Cheyenne or you know Salinas, California. You know places that you hear about. You know when you're growing up and to get to go and. You know, you get to go a lot of cool places, meet cool people, and you know, all of that kind of is you know surrounds you know the, the the sport. But you know, again, I, I see I see quite a few of them that they like everything about bull riding except riding. And you know, for me, that's that's what it was all about. It was for for, for you know, is it, getting on and riding and the the challenge of you know making the whistle and the you know, just the rush of adrenaline, you know, every time the, you know, the shoot gate opens, you know, people that have never done it, it's so, it, you can't explain to them what it, what it feels right. like, you know, but it's, it's a rush of adrenaline. It's, it's, it, it's the same feeling. I mean, I got on my first calf when I was four years old and I got on my last bull when I was 35 and it was the exact same feeling when I was four, then when I was 35, when the gate opens, it's just explosion, just rush that, uh, you know, there's nothing cool. There was nothing cooler than that. And, yeah. you know, riding for me, it was just the the most challenging, the coolest, funnest thing I could, I could ever imagine. And, you know, I, I never got tired of it. <clears throat> you know, I, I'm thinking back that I, I rode as long as I did, you know, makes, it makes no sense. But, you know, I just, uh, I still loved it. I still wanted to do it. And I did it, you know, until Dr. Freeman said, hey, if you have that same injury again, you know, one level, you know, one level up, then mm -hmm. you're going to be, 
dead or Chris Reed, so you might ought to consider doing something <laughs> different. And I yeah. said, enough said. And uh, <laughs> that, that was it. But, you know, it, it, again, you, you talk about every, a lot has changed. But, you know, I, I think one thing that, that's hard for, for kids now is that if you go to say, oh, I'm going to go get on some bulls, because when we started, you want know, to go get on some bulls, you, know, you give them five, ten bucks, you get on, and you weren't getting on the caliber of bulls that they have now. And so now, I think, unfortunately, guys, some, not not all guys, but, you know, there, there's some guys that, you know, they just want somebody to get on their bulls. And more times than not, you get a young guy getting on a bull that they, they shouldn't be on. Right. And, you know, they just wipe them out and light, annihilate them. And before they ever get a chance to even experience what bull riding is about, you know, and you can't learn how to ride bulls if you're getting drilled, you know, the first jump. If you're getting yeah. on a bull that, you know, you have no chance to, to ride more than one or two, three jumps, well, then – you know, you're, you're, you're wasting your time. And yeah. I think mo I think a lot of them just get killed off before they ever, before, even even kids that have talent that, that want to ride, a lot of times they just get, they get mucked out and <laughs> before they ever have a chance to really develop and, and mature as a rider. Yeah, yeah cause I, you know, thinking back on, I remember getting on jump kickers and making laps around the arena. I think just going <laughs> going around and around and around and around. But, that, but that's what it took because when you got on that jump kicker and, and you rode that sucker all the way to the other arena and back, it just the confidence. Well, that you, you get got. you get you get the feeling of what it feels like to, you know, to, to stay on it. You know, and what bull riding is, you know, it's it's really no different than any other sport. There's a reason you stay on and a reason you don't stay on, and it it's very, you know, there are basics, there's fundamentals that you have to do. There's about four things that you have to do to have have a chance to to make the whistle and. You know why Sage Kimsey has dominated the way he has the last few years because fundamentally he just does everything correctly. Mm -hmm. You know his, you know his his body works in sync to be able to react to whatever this bull's going to do. He can turn back to the left. He can turn back to the right. He can jump. He can back up. He can move forward. You know, but he's always, you know, he always has a good grip with his legs and feet. Always has his upper body and his free arm in a position to just react and move right. wherever that bull is and that's really what bull riding is it's it's a you know it's it's a trained reaction and your body it just reacts to you know that movement and the only way you get to that that point that level is by lots and lots of practice yeah you just got to do it because it, because over over time it's just like you don't you don't think about it. it's like a muscle it's like muscle memory exactly it's, 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 it comes it's, automatic over time you want you want to learn how to ride bulls you you ride bulls you know <laughs> You know, I always hear people, you know, going to the gym, and I don't, you know, going to the gym doesn't have a damn thing to do with making the whistle. You know, I don't, you know, I think you, you have to be in, you have to be in decent shape, but you know, I always say, you know, you need to be in riding shape. The only way you get in riding shape is by riding, you know, <laughs> push-ups or sit-ups. Again, it doesn't have anything to do with making the whistle. Right. You know, it, it, it just doesn't. And I say, well, it's eight seconds. How how good a shape do you really have to be in? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean you can't you can't be overweight, you right. know, but and you have to be able to you know you just have to be flexible and be able to, to react. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's it's not rocket science, but you know you you want to be a bull rider, you you got to get on. Yeah. Back back if we go back in the day, back when you're riding, what what was a place or, or an event, you know, a destination that you went to to go ride that you're like, man, this this is the best place to go ride. Well, for, for for me, growing, I grew up in El Paso, on the, and there was an arena on the on the east side of town that, you know, once a week we could go we could go practice riding bulls, and uh, there was a guy named Tim Webb, super nice guy, he's still around today. Even when I had my van out there, you know, he actually comes and judges. But you could go get on bulls that and get on bulls that were at the level that you'd have a chance to stay on, but I mean, you had to, you had to learn how to do things correctly, and you know, you know. The, I mean, I started riding calves, steers, and you know, the older you get, the bigger the animal gets, and by the time you're 16 years old, you're getting on regular-sized bulls, but you're you're not getting on, 
you know, NFR <laughs> caliber bulls. You yeah. just have to get on animals that bulls that you can have a chance, you know, so you can learn, so you can challenge yourself. Uh, you know, but the key is you know, getting on. I mean, mm-hmm. don't. I mean, I just whenever I was in college, uh, you know, there were there were ranchers there that you know they'd bring in to the college. They just bring you know trade a load of bulls and we just get on them <laughs> and mac altizer that's right after it started bad company rodeo and you know i was lucky that that he was out there so we would get on and ride a lot but i would get on you know four five six seven bulls a day because i just wasn't any good i mean i was i sucked i mean <laughs> and i had been riding ever since i was a kid but you know i it just took me a long time to I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the I knew the basics of what I was trying to accomplish, but you know, it, it just for me it just took a lot of just trial and error and just getting on, getting drilled, getting on and you know. I was too I mean, many times people look at me and say, Maybe you ought to try something else <laughs> and uh, you know, I was too hard headed and too stubborn to quit and that's that's all I ever really really wanted to do. And when I started having some success, wow, that there was nothing funner than that. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, li- I liked riding bulls when, when I couldn't. But with the same for the kids, there's a lot, we got a lot of kids that, that watch and a lot of kids that do stuff. For these kids that are coming up and and that's what they want to do, you know, they see your event in Fort Worth and that's that's what they want to do. They want they want to make it to that event. They want to get there, and in their training, what advice would you have for them? The, the most important thing is to, is to go to to a clinic or a school where you can, you know, at least get an idea of what it's about you know the equipment spurs rope you know how to put your rope on you know the shoot procedure you know and the and the basics and fundamentals of what you're trying to tell your body to do teach your body to do in terms of you know as you said muscle memory and you know teaching it your body how to react and finding a good place where you can go and do that mm-hmm. where you're not getting on a bull that you have zero chance of riding more than one or two jumps you know i i i think that you know the 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 you know riding a barrel you know terry holland came up with the you know the mighty bucky and <laughs> this and that to where you can do some exercises and kind of get a simulation of how bull bucks and what you're trying to do you know any and all of that kind of thing you know, but the most important thing is, is 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 riding and you know knowing what you're trying to accomplish and you know not getting on something that you just don't belong you don't have a chance you don't have a chance to ride and you know the more you get on something like that you know bull riding's dangerous as, as hell as it is so you you don't take unnecessary chance especially when you're trying to learn and that's that just comes from making sure, you know, you're not, you know, and it's always good to surround yourself with, with guys that have similar desires that they want, you know, I was lucky, I grew up, with, there was a handful of us, we all wanted to ride and, it, you know, hanging around with guys that wanted to do the same thing, that wanted to be good and do good and, you know, do, 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 do the right thing. Now, you know, over the years with the, with the safety, you know, safeties came into it and you got, you know, we got the, the bull power now and you got the safety, you know, you got the vest that came out and you got the helmets. What do you think about, you know, with, with the bull riding what it is today and with the ability to have the helmets and the vest, what do you think about that? Do you think that always, more of the guys always, should be more I, I, safe? I think you should always wear a vest. I think you should always wear a helmet. You know, when I, when I was riding, you know, I, I, I had the best doctors, you know, Dr. Freeman, Dr. Evans, guys like that. But I didn't, I didn't wear a helmet, but I had issues with my neck. And at that time, they didn't have a, a helmet that was specifically developed for bull riding. And, you know, they didn't want me to wear a helmet because the helmets they had were probably too heavy and they didn't want to put more weight, which added more stress to my mm-hmm. neck and spine. But, and especially when you, when you grow up doing something, you know, it's hard to go, 
I don't know that I've ever seen anybody that went from, you know, guys my age or in my era generation that never wore a helmet, and then all of a sudden they started wearing a helmet. They it didn't seem like they could ever. They could ever figure it out. Right. I mean, it's 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 just a distraction because you just don't. You're just not used to it. But when you're but when you're growing when you're I mean the, the the equipment now is you know the vests out there the helmets out there you should always have both because I mean it's dangerous and you should always protect yourself as much as you can but ha- mindful that it's it's a dangerous sport and it's yeah. not safe and it's not going yeah. to be safe there's nothing you can do to make it safe it's just the the nature of that's you're getting on a 1500 pound bull. That, that's it. And I, that's why I tell them, you know, people ask me all the time. So, you know, at, at the time back in the old, you didn't think about that because you, you didn't come up that way. But I tell them, you know, you know, if I was looking back at myself and in today, in today's times, yeah, because with the way bull riding is, with the the money out there, the things going on, you want to you want to protect yourself the best you can because you want to you need to be able to compete at the next event because if you're not competing at the next event, right. you're hurt. Right. Doesn't matter you're, how you're good you are, if you're hurt, you're not going to be able to. Yeah, you know, and that's another thing. You know, it's it, it might be noble to go ahead and ride when when you got a broken bone or you're hurt, and you know, know that there's a difference between being hurt. You know, if I've got some bruises here and there, well, that hurts. But if I've got, you know, you know, the muscle torn off my my bicep or a broken bone, I'm hurt. I mean, I'm injured. I'm t- that's why I'm not hurt. I'm injured. Yeah. So no, no, that there's a different. And if you're injured, you know, like I said, it it might, you know, make you a tough guy, whatever. It, but it doesn't make any sense to get on with something broken. Yeah. Because you're not going to be competitive anyway. No. You're all you are going to get hurt worse. And so, <laughs> just understand and know that, you know. Don't don't get on if you're if you're not healthy enough to make the whistle. Getting on and getting drilled two or three jumps. <laughs> it's not gonna help anybody. <laughs> no, it helps. No, you're just, yeah. you're, you're gonna hurt yourself worse, and it's yeah. gonna be longer before you can be healthy yeah. to be competitive. Yeah, that's it. At, at the end of the day, you'll be broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I tell you what, we're almost up on the hour. So, you got anything you want to throw out to the folks about this weekend coming out? To no, the we 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 just have a you know. Fort Worth Cowtown Coliseum. It's it's a great venue, not a bad seat. You can go to Ticketmaster and get 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 tickets. Um, and it's 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 a, it's a good time. It's it's a fun time. There's not a better place to watch an event than than Cowtown Coliseum. And uh, you can do anything Saturday night. Come see us. That's it. You know you can you, know, you can like us on Facebook and you know they give away some tickets and uh, same thing on Instagram and. Mm-hmm. Uh, win a few tickets actually give away some merchandise and okay. some other things as well so we'll do that so we'll thanks for having me I, I, I appreciate it so you, you guys do a great job keep it up thank you we'll do it and with that everything else going on see you there everything else um, go to pepperstewart.com look around check it out while you're there buy a t-shirt